Hello everyone, Perry here uh, with my friend Devin and today we are going on a little bit of a hike through the woods. If, if you watched my 1812 battleground videos you'll recognize. What? You'll recognize uh, this. Going your way? Would you? What are you doing? This is not a humorous video. This is a serious video <laughs> blog. Coming your way? No, there's nothing. Right. You know, I feel a little down from that movie we saw, where the wild things are. Yeah. This is not a time to joke. Sorry. I know. This is not the first time today that you've messed with me, <laughs> my friend. Shame on you. But as you can see, this is where we walked. This is where we came down through and then we turned. Now this is the part where everyone had to walk and then this was the entryway to where the 1812 event was. They had a big um, opening part and a lot of people were parked back here and would, would walk in and then they had all of the tents set up along the reservoir. But we're going to park and we're going to walk through here. Hopefully get to somewhere where there aren't a lot of people either fishing or doing the same thing. That way we'll have our own time to, you know, talk to the camera and everything. So just keep watching and you're going to be entertained with, with some of our thoughts and such. Got the shallow bank right here along this this is Sinoa River, and we're uh, we're parked over there, just taking a little walk through the wilderness, and I'm gonna walk along this path for a little while, see where it see where it goes. So it, it doesn't it look a lot different without all the people here from 1812. Yeah, it looks smaller. That whole event, yeah. It does look a little smaller. When, it, when everyone was lined up along the bank, it looked like it would take forever just to, to walk along and get through places. But now there's like not that many people out here, and we're going to look for an even more secluded place. Because as you can see, I mean, there are some people around here. This guy out here, is, he's fishing. Let's get a close-up of him fishing. Yeah, he's got his boots on. He's, he's fishing out there. This, this reminds me of that movie, A River Runs Through It. Oh, it's with Robert Redford, and that's one of the, oh, it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Why do you say, oh gosh? Because Robert Redford, I love him. Are you being an ooze hole? No, it's okay. he's good. I like Jeremiah Johnson. Yeah, Jeremiah Johnson, that movie that I reviewed once. It's a good film. But I'm going to keep walking and see where this journey takes us. Well, as you can see, I'm here down at the bottom of this bank, and I was taking pictures with my iPhone, and I asked Devin to hold my camera. Now I'm faced with the issue of getting back up. So hopefully that goes well. I don't know. But you should probably turn it off, because I don't want anyone to see me having troubles getting up this bank. The sun's starting to set, and it's really peaceful back here. Devin and I are sitting on these stumps that we found. It's really, really convenient if you can see those. I've got my nice moccasin type, type of shoes on. But what I wanted to talk about briefly is um, how other people view you. And what, where I'm going with that is with the internet, the birth of the internet, a lot of things have changed in the world today. You can keep you can keep track and keep tabs with a lot of friends that live far away, and before you wouldn't have been able to to keep contact with them. But and that's a really good thing. I mean, you can you can keep in touch with friends. But the other the other thing about it is that with people keeping tabs on you, there's also the ability for people to be more judgmental. And my main point that I want to make is that you can't allow other people and their judgments of you or their opinions of you to affect how you live your life. If I did that, I would be a very unhappy person. If I allowed other people's opinions of me to determine how I felt, how I acted, 
and how I lived my life, I, it wouldn't be much of a life. And I just wanted to make that point. Um, there's a there's a poem by Robert Frost, and it's it's about two roads uh, diverged in a yellow wood, and he took the one less traveled by. And I see myself in in that same light. These are an orange yellow yellow wood yellow woods here, and so there's this is the perfect place to talk about it. I feel that in my life I've done a lot of things that other people wouldn't have done. I've done things differently. I see things differently. And I'm on my own path. I'm living my own formatted life. And from the other path that most other people are taking, they can see me through some of the trees. They can see me walking along. And when they can, when we come into contact in that format, they they insult me with different things. And I'm not saying I'm not victimizing myself. I'm not saying that in my life I've only had people that are harsh and cruel to me. I'm just saying that along everyone's path there will be people on another path looking over at you and saying things that you might not appreciate and it, it at times will hurt. But what I want to tell you and anyone who's watching is that you need to live for yourself. You need to make yourself happy. You cannot live in accordance with other people's um, dictations. What they, what they want for you might not be what you want for yourself, and you have to take your own path. You can hear some noise in the, the woods across the river. There's some noise over there. It's a really good analogy with what I'm talking about and with where I'm at. Um, yeah, um, that's deep. Yeah, I know. I, but it's something that's been on my mind a lot, and I've talked about it before in other videos, wanting to do a video about not living your life for other people. You've got to live it for yourself. Everyone's on their own path. Everyone's marching to the beat of their own drum, and that's what I'm doing. That's what you're probably doing. And don't feel bad if you don't follow the mass. Don't feel bad if you don't agree with the majority, if you walk your own way if you do your own thing. That's what I do a lot of the time. And I don't need anyone else's approval to do that. That's just what I wanted to talk about today along these wooded banks. And um, I will be back here soon. I'd like to do another video and I'm sure Devin would like to come with me. Do another video in here. It's very peaceful just to sit along this this bank here and look out upon the Mississinawa River here in Indiana. And if you you hear those splashes along the bank. There's like frogs and fish jumping, and it's just very alive. This is this is the best definition of life that you could ever get. It's just fall, and it's a nice cool day. We could we could come back here this next spring when it's not so muddy, obviously, but come back here and show like the budding trees and show the comparison between these fall leaves and then what the spring looks like. Then this camera doesn't do it justice, I think. Would you agree? Because like if you're here, these trees just seem so majestic. And on camera, they just seem kind of theatrical. So I, I hope you guys take your own walks through the woods. And if you want to, post a video response. I'd like to see it. Post a video response to this video of yourselves walking through the wilderness. And respond to our thoughts on living for yourself and not so much for other people. I hope all is well in your neck of the woods, my friend. You really are my friends. I appreciate your comments and your messages. You make my life easier to get through because I feel like I have more friends. I have people out there who understand what I talk about and what I'm saying. And I know Devin's appreciated some of the comments you guys have left for him. He's, yeah, thanks, guys. he's read through them and he's really talked to me about it and he's He's really impressed with the interest that you guys take in us. Yeah. And I am too. So, so long for now. Hope all's well in your neck of the woods. There's an extra little cut scene here. We're walking back to the truck, which is over yonder. And as we're walking down this long alley here, I can, I can so clearly smell the scent of... Fall, uh, it consists of apples, 
you know, apples growing on the tree, cider. There's no cider around here, but I'm pretty sure that there's apples that have been left from when they made the cider. Like they dumped them somewhere. I can smell them. I can also smell the leaves, the dirt, the river over here. It's just a very fall scent that has been left that is here now because fall is present. And I wanted to go ahead and mention that. I wanted you to feel like you're here. If you, if you know what the smell of dead leaves are like, I think it's a sweet, rather um, ground, like dirt kind of smell, soil kind of smell. I love it. It is fall this evening, and I just wanted to let you know that that's what it smelled like. I wanted you to feel as though you were walking along with Devin and I. Good night.